I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Last week, we were introduced to Michael Webb, and what a wonderful story, a faithful, active Latter-day Saint who found Jesus in different ways, and today we get to meet his wife, Angie, and you're just a hero to me. Oh, uh, thank Based you. on what I know Michael went through and, and coming to you, uh, as a good active Mormon and and uh, you're having to deal with stuff. We'll get into that in just a minute, but tell us where you were born and raised. I was born in Salt Lake City, but raised in, in Colorado. Were you? Yeah, okay. just north of Denver for 18 years. Moved to back to Salt Lake the day after I graduated from high school. So. Okay, and your parents active, were they? Were yeah, you active as both a family? very, very active. Yeah. I'm the oldest of nine kids. Oh my um, goodness. My dad was the bishop when I was a teenager. Oh, okay. My mom taught seminary for years, early morning seminary, so. And you yeah. attended that at 5.30 in the morning, Yes, right? I did. She was never my seminary teacher, but yeah. Yeah, so I, you didn't get the release time that the Utah no, kids got, right? No, yeah, that yeah. was a. They an get interesting, that during the yeah. day, and you had to go yeah. to early morning seminary. Yep. And your mom taught that for a while, but didn't teach you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. any, uh, so just active and young women, some primary mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And yeah, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. It was it was my life. My mm -hmm. friends were all you know LDS. We clung together in Denver. There weren't a lot of of oh, Mormons, yeah. but yeah, I, I, it was great. You know, camps, and girls camp, going to the temple. They built a temple in Denver when I was a, a young teenager. So. Yeah. Doing Big all baptisms of that. Uh -huh. for the dead. Yeah. You earn your young women's medallion. Yeah. For that's... those that are young, for LDS, they'll realize that's quite the achievement. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like the, Not everybody the does Eagle that. Scout for, for yeah. the young women yeah. sort of a thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great accomplishment. So yeah. just knew the church was true. I guess you bore your testimony about it, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I think even as a teenager, though, um, I always craved any message about Jesus. I mean, it was always, you know, couched in the church because that's all I knew. But I think yeah. even then the Lord was, was pulling me. You so. actually had an experience at, at age 11. So. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes people will say, well, did you ever have a born again experience? And I think some people can pinpoint a time or a day. I don't know. But for me, I remember as an 11 year old girl, I was with a group of friends and they were up to no good. And I mean, no good. Oh, <laughs> and these um, LDS friends? no, no, I okay. had, these were just other friends, friends from school or, yeah. and okay. we would have sleepovers and hang out. And, but it just was really feeling pulled into that whole worldliness. And they were really actively, <laughs> you know, doing some bad things. And, um, and right before seventh grade, I felt the Lord basically say to me, you can stay on the track that you're on, or you can come with me and I'm going to change your life, but you know how it's going to end up if you're there. Wow. And I just mm -hmm. sort of gave my life over. I mean, he chose me. It wasn't my work, you know, yeah. but from that moment on, I, I was changed. I still went through years and years in church oh, uh, sure, membership, yeah. Yeah. but 
I, I just, but you felt a different yes. relationship with him. Yeah, and, I, and even at that young age, I, I could tell the difference in, in some fluff talk versus somebody yeah. testifying of Jesus, you know, even if it wasn't necessarily the full. Well, that's special, Jesus. and I'm sure yeah. that's been helpful to you all these years. Yeah. Now, you remained active, though. I mean, oh, you, yeah. You meet your husband at yep. the University of Utah yep. Book, Book of Mormon, Mormon class, class. Uh, institute, yeah. I guess. Yep. Uh, that's where you met Michael. Yeah. And uh, and was it love at first sight? Kind well, of thing? it's and, it's funny because I was sort of an obnoxious Mormon, and so I thought like you know, <laughs> the super Mormon. spiritual guys go to like foreign countries on their missions, and oh. they're just super dedicated. And they must so, be special to be called out. Okay, yeah, I guess I whatever. It's yeah. just I'm annoyed when I look at that that <laughs> stuff about myself, but. Um, but he, you know, he had been divorced and mm. um, I was, you know, just this young sort of naive gal, but he was wearing an EFY teacher t-shirt mm -hmm. and I um, went to that EFY. And so I thought, oh, you know, but then I found out he had written some of the music for that EFY and I was, um, you know, about nine years younger than him. So, so my parents were like putting the kibosh on that immediately. They happy, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you can go out with him once. That's it. Yeah. So, so yeah, but, you, but I mean, it was just the whole thing was such a God thing, you know, cause yeah. Michael has such an influence in, in my, um, being open to, to change. So, yeah. yeah. But you continue dating yeah. apparently. Yeah. And I yeah. guess against folks will, and maybe they eventually come. You do get married in the yeah. Salt Lake Temple, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They, ca so they came around. Folks yeah. happy about that yeah. and felt like maybe this was a good thing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah. And we had five kiddos and did the whole Mormon thing, baby blessings, baptisms, ordinations, the whole thing. So, yeah. yep. And parents were happy with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they yeah. were all right. Yeah, it was all good. <laughs> Doing the thing. Yeah. Doing the outward appearance where everything looks when, so great. And when was this? Uh, you were where were you at at this point? Was this? In, we raised our family in East Mill Creek, okay. um, in Utah. So okay. yeah, just right there. And so now Michael starts. I guess what what happens next? <laughs> you know, my thing about Michael is, I think he was always a faithful attender, but he was. I think he was on his way out of the church ever, ever since he, you know, we got together because we conference. Even when you were married, you mean kind of thing? Or? He would never have thought that's what was happening. Yeah. But like watching um, LDS conference every six months, he would just be so frustrated. And it would drive me crazy because he would make comments like, I can't believe they said that, you know, just the frustration of you give this talk about Jesus and and how great he is, followed by, you know, if you are worthy, and when you earn your right to heaven, and it, it just would drive him crazy. Mm -hmm. And so even then, he was seeing these differences, but I was feeling threatened, like, ah, you're not supposed to say anything negative against the brethren, you know, yeah. we make covenants in the temple not to do that. So right. so it was just sort of Speak like this threatening them. thing, yeah. 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 So I did not look forward to conference, because I thought, oh, he's going to be the disgruntled member who's... <laughs> Listening to... Yeah, but things. really, I mean, he was just asking questions, which was so great, but you know, you're not supposed to ask questions yeah. when you're a Mormon. You're not, you're, you're, it's not being faithful to have questions, you know, so. Well, he mentioned something about a two-year process that he went through, and we really didn't even get into why he got to that, that point, but you saw some changes in him, I guess, yeah. when, was yeah. he starting to read the Bible, or was he? Yeah, I think at some point he finally just thought, I, I can't do this anymore. I think he had been reading, um, you know, books and listening to sermons and listening to Christian music, Christian and, music yeah. and reading the Bible and really learning the gospel. And it's interesting because I, I would have agreed with everything that he shared because yeah. it was all so Christ centered. I loved it, but I thought, well, let's love it and stay in the church. Yeah. You know, let's not, let's, let's not, be, not rock the boat. Yeah, <laughs> no. And a lot of my reasons for that were that I, I wanted to do the Mormon thing. Like it felt, we, we have four son, sons and a daughter. Michael has two older daughters, yeah. but we didn't raise them. But so we raised our four sons and you know, you just project their future. We're gonna have four missionaries right after another. Boom, right. boom, boom. And yeah. it just felt like, wow, ah, don't, don't be rocking the ship, man. This is, this is what we're doing here. Yeah. And so it felt threatening, but uh, everything he was discovering, 
Um, he shared a book with me that he had found called What's So Amazing About Grace by Philip Yancey. Yeah, we mentioned that. And yeah. that's one that I read. It was like the yeah. first non-Mormon book I ever looked at. And yeah. the title kind of caught my eye. What yeah. did you think of that? It completely changed my life. I feel like the Lord did used that really? as a catalyst for me because I really realized, oh, like it's all grace. It's not grace plus works or grace plus a little bit of works. It's all grace. We can't add anything to it. Nothing. Like I really feel like the Lord spoke that truth to me in reading that book. And I realized after I read it, man, this is the truth. And even if someone speaks differently at conference and says, it's really after all you can do, like the Book of Mormon scripture says, I can't deny this is this is true. It's grace. It's all grace. So that that was another seed that was so planted. So even even if they're telling us something mm -hmm. different in conference, yep. I've got to believe what yeah. I'm hearing it. Yeah. Hearing about them. So I think part of my journey was to feel like um, it, it got to the point where I was like, well, I'll just stay in the church and and make changes from the inside because this is God's true church and it's just mm -hmm. messed up with fallen people and He'll come fix it when He comes again and yeah. but right now I'm just gonna stay and well, really focus on kids, Jesus right? and yes and so I was doing the whole church thing by myself. You were I, young women's president. I was young women's president yeah. um, and you know loved that but even that was challenging because you know you read through those manuals and you're like I can't. I can't teach that lesson. Okay, let's skim through that paragraph <laughs> and we'll focus on this, you know? So it, it was challenging because I couldn't do something. So I felt like, you know, even there. God was touching yeah. your heart. And, yeah. yeah. And, and it, it got to the point where I couldn't stand Sunday school. So I just wouldn't go. I'd sit out in the foyer and talk to my friends, even though I was the young women's president. Yeah, okay. Go talk to one of the girls. Well, there's usually a reason to stay out there. Yeah, and yeah. Watch, help somebody else with the kids mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. I, yeah. So yeah, interesting. Yeah. But watching Michael, you know, he had struggled with certain addictions and, and just really had some hard things that he was dealing with. And I started to see him change like he was changing from the inside out. And I couldn't deny that that was God working through him. So, you know, it yeah. was interesting. Yeah. And challenged his testimony, I guess. And yeah. And were you thinking, uh, what were you thinking all this time? Well, you know, it was all fine if if we were doing the Mormon thing while he was doing his so thing. He hasn't messed up your right. celestial yeah, marriage. Right, like the little and all picture, that. right? Yeah. Um, but it got to the point where he finally came to me and said, I, I, "The garments are coming off. I can't wear." an emblem of a religion that I don't believe in. I, I can't do it. It's not. That must have been devastating. And yeah. I was devastated. Yeah. I mean, I just had a terrible reaction. Within that week, I remember um, snowshoeing in the hills behind my house. At this time, we were living in Midway. And I just fell on my knees and said, Lord, please just soften his heart. Help him to, you know, see the truth. Help him to come back and lead his family. We need him to be like the priesthood yeah, leader of our home, you know. And all that. Yeah, and um, just so sincere, you know. And I just over the next several months, like a heart was changed, but it was mine. It was shocking. Like at first the Holy Spirit said, he's fine. Don't even worry about it. Leave him where he's at. There's okay. no need for you to worry about changing him. And your heart softens. And then my heart starts softening and I'm seeing, I'm seeing things. And so, you know, just little transitions. And then I start going with him to support him while he leads music at a Christian church. What did you think of going, this contrast between the Mormon church and the Christian well, church. Well, I, lo I loved the Christian church. I just thought, why can't we be? So those kinds of things, you know, you attend a Christian church. It's all about Jesus. The praising. Yes. And, but, and then you and come the back and you're like, I don't think we've had any mention of anything F for the last two weeks. We've just heard the reports of the kids coming back from scout camp. And yeah. that's fun, <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't feel like the, the gospel. Worshiping this yeah. Jesus that so I really liked it, but it also felt threatening. It felt scary to me because when you've it's devoted your known. life it's and made, known. yeah, and you've made covenants and promises, you, there's fear there. You feel like I, I'm going to be doing something really wrong if I question too much. It, it felt really frightening. I remember one time at, at the church in Heber, a woman came up to me and, and said, can I pray for you? And I said, sure. And she just was letting loose and praying over me and Lord, please bring Angie. And I just, when she finished, I felt like, no, you just don't understand. 
this is just a really hard decision. But all of those things and so many other people who were praying for us just softened my heart. Yes, they just no, they just softened my heart and made it so that eventually God just said, "Let's cut that tie and look forward. You don't ever need to turn back again." You know, so. Uh, yeah, it was just Did amazing. you think back of your 11-year-old experience, too, that, that this yeah. was more about Jesus? And yes, and that's the thing. You know, I've said, I, I don't know what the Lord is doing in my Mormon friends and family's lives. I have no idea what He's doing. I believe that but I he's was probably saved. Doing something, yes, huh? as yeah. a young person, and yet I spent all those years in the church. I think at some point you have to go... Uh, I, you, you have to cut the tie and move on. You can't stay. You can't stay yeah. and truly, you know, know Jesus and stay in that but church. But it can be a sacrifice. I mean, yeah. your family's probably not. Yeah. Your family, brothers, sisters, parents are, are probably unhappy. Or you know, um, some of the others have left. Um, it, it's. Oh. I think it's been. My parents have been very gracious. I think it's been hard on them, hard though. Yeah. But it's kind of one of those things where we just don't discuss it very much. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so. That's kind of the way we've left it with a few yeah. of ours. Just, yeah. It's easier just not to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. Well, you, uh, gosh, there's so much to cover. Uh, you had some little quotes that I thought were so neat. Uh, something about a dim light bulb. Do you yeah, remember that I, I just, you know, I think the longer you're out of the Mormon faith and, and the, the longer you're just truly with Jesus and He's working through you, the Mormon church just looks like a dim light bulb on its way out. I mean, there's just no comparison. Like, God is huge. As a Christian, he's everything, you know, or he's just part of the, the package deal in yeah. Mormonism. You know, I'll never forget an experience going over to my house. One of my brothers were on a mission, so all nine of us gather with our families to do the whole video chat or phone chat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, he was telling an experience he was having in, in um, I think he was in Brazil, about meeting a Christian and how amazing it was and how this guy kind of had an influence on him out on his mission. And somebody in the room said, well, yeah, but all the Christians have to, to teach is Jesus. I mean, we have all this other stuff. <laughs> and that so was sort all, of a light bulb moment. All you like, have to teach about is Jesus. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> that well, is funny. Exactly. And now it's what else would you want to exactly. talk about? There's nothing bigger or yeah. better or more important than Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, did you, did you understand even a little of this as a Mormon? I mean, being active and going through the temple and looking forward to your celestial kingdom and your inheritance and all that. Uh, you know, did you think uh, it was? We just don't. What is it that we're missing, he, or what do well, Mormons it, it, miss? When Jesus is everything, all of that other stuff is it, just a bunch of. It's nothing. It means nothing. Just I mean, I'll never works, forget even so. as the Lord was growing me, going through the Mormon temple and thinking. You know, because they show this movie and thinking, if Jesus and Heavenly Father, at the time I didn't understand the Trinity, yeah. they represent them as two people, really are shiny cellophane beings who talk in monotone. I don't even want to go there. I mean, it just was so passionless, you know. Yeah. I, I was expecting, if this is really the Lord's house, to just be full of the glory of God. And, you know, I've learned as a Christian, you don't have to go into a building to experience that. He's not in a place. He's like, in, he's, in he's in us. And he's in we're the body the of believers. Yeah, the and as a Christian, you know, you gather to pray and to praise him and worship in music and in prayer and in sermons and with people. And that's where that feeling of the glory of God is, you know, mm -hmm. like he's present in us. You don't have to go to a place to learn a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with anything, you know. And I don't mean disrespect I when I say that, but I also feel like because it was my story, I can say that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that's yeah. not me anymore. So. Well, it takes a, a willingness to step back just a little bit and look mm -hmm. at a, a different picture, take a different perspective. Yeah. Did you start then learning about, as we talked with uh, Michael about the negative stuff? I mean, did you start I didn't studying really much of that? I didn't really learn any of that yeah. for at, at least a year or so. Yeah. There were a few times when he would try and like push me. He, he was anxious, you can imagine. Yeah. Because there were times when I would say, look, you know, 
I've set you free. If you want to go do your thing, that's fine, and I will support you. But this is how we started, and I'm keeping the kids doing this whole Mormon thing. Yeah. And I can see now, in hindsight, how totally frustrated he must have felt, like just hands tied, because, you know, now I'm just so thrilled to have our children have this this different this different life to belong mm -hmm. to the Lord it, it, and not have that pressure of missions and all of that stuff. It's been so great. It's a freedom, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's this? totally a freedom. And my yoke is easy, mm -hmm. my burden is light. I yeah. love that. And, yeah. Yeah. So after uh, Michael kind of shares this stuff and you read the Amazing Grace mm -hmm. thing and book and so do you start and you just continue going to church then with him and just finally said okay yeah did you say you cut the tie and... yeah i just started to get more brave i think um i watched a lot of video testimonies i watched adam's road band their whole mm -hmm. testimony i think the lord used that to kind of say it's it's okay like you can there's do others this. that are going yeah. through this and yeah i think yeah. the the hold up for me was just i was so afraid of disappointing my family, family. i just thought oh but then it becomes more about family than jesus yes. then right yeah yeah and yeah. so but then um just you know was able to go be baptized my daughter and i were baptized in a lake together yeah, it, and that was just a thrill um mm -hmm. michael had already been baptized and one of my other sons and then our other two sons followed a year later. So it was really, really special. And now you've moved to Oak Harbor, mm -hmm. Washington, and yeah. your husband's the worship leader. And, yeah. So and you play violin. Yeah, and our two kids play, are also on the worship are you team. On that so too? Mm -hmm. you play? Yeah, so oh, I play violin. Wonderful. And it's wonderful. Are you going to do that tomorrow? Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're yeah. going to visit our old little church. Maybe we'll have to church. run up there. It'll be fun <laughs> It'll be to fun. see that. So yeah, yeah, it's different, but. Well, gosh, um, time's running here and uh, what um, what would you say to the your family and friends and you know i i don't it's it's interesting but i don't feel any pressure to say anything because okay. i just Look, i know that it's hands. god's work you yeah. know i i am not shy about my faith um they know that i love jesus um there are times when i feel like i want to say can i pray with you you know yeah. um but i don't I, I just know it's the Lord's work. I pray for for them a lot, but yeah. um, I, I don't know what he's doing and he might be leading them in, and maybe he'll let me be a part of that process, but I don't feel any pressure to say anything. Yeah. If yeah. a Mormon's having a little bit of a question or a crisis of faith, what, what do you think they should do? Just trust in God alone. You don't need to talk to, you know, you don't need to talk to, um, Mormon bishops leaders or leaders, and, you know. just pray to the Lord, you know, you can go to him and read the Bible, you know, read just the trust the Bible. I think Michael mentioned that the Bible, the, the article of faith makes you feel like you can't trust it. And, and I had a visiting teacher once who used to come um, while I was transitioning out, but she didn't really know that. And she <laughs> said, so what's your scripture reading plan? And she was married to a member of the stake presidency. And I said, well, we read the Book of Mormon and then the Bible. and we just switch off every night, and she goes, well, why would you do that? <laughs> and I, that was another one of those things where I thought, well, what do you mean why would I do that? It's the Bible, you know? So those little things that just made me go, you know, the church doesn't want this, this Christian narrative. They don't want people to read the Bible outside of the lens they want you to read it in yeah, other because than it's not the same gospel. <laughs> you know, that's the whole thing that I finally came to the conclusion that it's, they don't, they don't, I can't change the church from the inside out because it's not yeah, Christ's it's, church. It, it can't be changed. It's not the gospel. You have to actually go over, leave, you know. Wow. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been and quite a journey, a journey for yeah. you. And I, when I called you a hero, and I, you've written so many wonderful things, and we're just probably not going to even get oh. to, to share <laughs> so okay. many of them. But yeah. uh, just little thoughts about uh, about Jesus and who he is now yeah. that we never understood as Mormons. Right? No, I, one of my favorite um, speakers is Ravi Zacharias. He's a, a Christian apologist, and he said, you know, God did not come to make bad people good, but to bring dead people to life. And that to me explains the entire difference. Mormonism is about 
you know, changing people um, through behavioral modification. They do want you to pray and and love God or whatever, but it's it's not about that. If I'm dead, I can't do anything to bring myself alive. It has to be completely the work of Christ, and yeah. you become a new and living creature, and that's been the whole difference. The right more there. I've studied, too, I, I get this sense that this whole business with the church and Joseph Smith, and he restored really the law mm -hmm. is what he restored, all yeah. that. If you go back into Leviticus and all that and where they have to do all yep. this law and all this cleansing yeah. and everything else, yeah. And, yeah. and to realize that Jesus paid for all those yeah. sins and took yeah. care, fulfilled the yeah. law yeah. and sacrifice. It's just, it's just freedom. I mean, I feel free from the burden of, well, you know, you have God's DNA inside of you, so you better get it together already and, yeah. you know, live this this life where you're constantly striving and he's going to help you, but, you know, keep getting up, keep doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. And instead it's like, well, okay, so I'm just a regular person like everybody else. I'm just a regular sinner. I'm not some special chosen for the last days chosen birthright person. I'm just a regular girl. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm a sinner. And, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and look what you yeah. did for me. Yes. It, it just, it's, it's such a relief and to just be free. So and, now and you him. can go sin and do all the sin no. you want, right? No, 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 no. That's not, yeah. you know, I don't think, my experience is that uh, my um, friends who know Christians, they don't, if you really know a Christian that's sincere. You don't think that they think they can go out They're and do They're spending everything. more time on Sunday at church yes. than they ever yeah. probably did as a yes. Mormon. I so, do. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you don't want to sin. I mean, no. you, you, the whole thought process is, and they and they're reinforced that concept mm -hmm. all the time. They just believe yeah. that we're yeah. eat, drink and be merry right. and just do what we want and that we no. have no responsibilities or no, no desire. And with the freedom comes a knowledge of your brokenness and your need. You know, I'm still reminded of that. And your appreciation. Yes, that yeah. I can't do anything outside of God. That makes me dependent and so thankful, you know, and just, you know, in awe yeah. that God would do that for me. Well, we're down to our last minute, Angie. Okay. So I appreciate you so much. And you've raised a wonderful family. And, and God, as you can see, too, in my life as well, yeah. just little things that happen yeah. along the way to, yes. to soften our heart. I really like what you said about a heart was changed, but it yeah. turned out to be yours. Truly, it's God's work and we can let go. There's no pressure because he's yeah. in charge. So, well, thank you very much. Him. And uh, I did want to mention one quick thing. We're, we're almost out of time, but a bishop did tell you to, to divorce your husband, right? Yeah, we'd gone through some really, really hard things involving some mental illness, and, and he had well, told me that. But he also became a, a great support to our family okay. after I said, uh uh, no okay. way, I'm not doing that. Good for you. Well, thanks so <laughs> much. I appreciate you. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.